Well, I'd say that we were drunk, except that neither of us drinks. But we drunk enough lattes to send us into the next galaxy. My skin was tingling, and Joe kept picking up my hand and dropping it, each time dragging a finger across my palm. He was young and tattooed and shaved and pierced, and I was about 10 years older. Vanilla skin, he called me. But he wouldn't tell me his last name or what he did, so I told him no way would I take him home with me. I was that kind of girl, but I wasn't that kind of girl. So let me ride the train home with you at least, he said. Let me make you feel safe. I didn't feel safe around him. He had pale skin and deep blue eyes and the slightest hint of a brogue. The tattoos were mostly Celtic designs and his pale scalp stubble hinted that when it grew, he had dark hair, black Irish, I thought. It was 2 a.m. on a Sunday night, and we boarded the train in Broadway Lafayette, both dressed for city combat, white t-shirts, black jeans, heavy boots, and we entered an empty car, empty but for the trash blowing around. And as we approached a seat, he said, so you won't fuck me at your place now? Not without further particulars, I replied. At this point, we were kissing and sucking each other's fingers, sticky with the coffee we downed. We'd both been bad drinkers once, but now coffee and sex were the drugs of choice. Not in your house, he said, and grabbed my shoulders from behind, licked my neck. I would have told him anything right then, but then he quickly slid his hands down my arms and grabbed my wrists. He pulled my arms overhead and kept both wrists trapped in one meaty hand. With the other, he pulled out a set of handcuffs. They jangled so loud. Just at that point, the doors flew open. Last stop in Manhattan. You can get off now if you like, Joe said, and loosened the pressure on my hands just a bit. But I shook my head. Let's see where this goes, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> you could take me home to your bed, he hissed, and shook the handcuffs. No, I said, and Joe flipped open the cuffs and slammed them down on my wrists, carefully suspending me from the overhead pole. I was still facing away from him, but I could see everything he was doing in the smudged subway window. My feet barely touched the floor. We were underground in a tunnel beneath the East River. I'm not a bad man, Joe explained. I just don't like to be denied. Then he yanked my shirt up and exposed my bra, shoving a hand into the soft, sweaty cotton. He came around so he was facing me and pulled my breast to his mouth. The cuffs hurt my wrists, but they seemed to build a sensation in my nipple. I was moaning. Joe was silent. His tongue was long and pink, and I could smell smoke on his skin. He laughed at my breast like a baby. His jeans bulged. I tried to move closer, get more of his mouth on my tip, but he backed away. And again, he moved behind me. First stop in Brooklyn, York Street. York Street. This is, this is change, babies. This is change. It's change. So First stop in Brooklyn, York Street, the ghost town stop, except for the West Elm and all that. Anyway, but anyway. So. <sighs> oh well. For a moment, I had a flash that Joe would make whoever. I'm sorry. <laughs> Remember Dumba? No. When, when whoever entered the car joined our handcuff party, I felt ashamed and very hot. I get off in six stops, I said, suddenly angry. Oh, you do, do you, Joe said impishly. Then we'll have to hurry this along. Joe unbuttoned my jeans and yanked them to the floor where they lay in a heap at my feet. I felt doubly trapped, a cloth bound round my legs, metal round my wrists. I was still wearing underwear, stupid white cotton briefs, because although, while I always wanted sex, I never believed I'd get it on the first date. <laughs> Practical panties, Joe said. <laughs> and ground himself into my back. I could feel his erection looking for a place to rest, and as he slid around my ass, it fit perfectly in my ass crack. I could hear Joe unzip, and in the window, I saw his cock rise in the air bobbing. Sweat dripped off his face and onto my back. I heard him reach into a back pocket, and that familiar metallic sound ripping, stretching. Next time, he growled as he rolled it over his cock, you'll put it on with your mouth. What makes you think you'll be in next time, I snapped. Then he spanked me once and I moaned. Don't pretend with me, Nell. And then he stuck his hand in my panties and ripped them off. They fell in a heap too. And before I could object, he had one hand dithering my clit and the other smoke, stroking my ass crack. You really have to get home, he murmured into my hair. No, I moaned. I mean, yes. <laughs> okay, with the rest
later. <laughs>